Today I found what might be the best inexpensive podcasting microphone out there, and here it is. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, folks. My name's Shane. So one of the things I like to do is try to find good microphones on a budget. This is the Behringer SL75C Cardioid Dynamic Microphone. It comes in at around $19 in the US. I paid $49 for this here in Melbourne, Australia. I ordered it online. This wasn't free or anything like that. It's an SM57 clone from Behringer. Now, Behringer make a lot of really great stuff for their price and some stuff you probably also want to avoid. But in terms of their mixers and microphones, I think they're really great value for money. And this is no exception. This might be one of the best for its price out there on the market. Now, if you're a guitar player, you can absolutely use a microphone like this in front of your amplifier. And that's a test I did on my In The Blues channel. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link up in the cards. I also tested it up against an SM57 in that type of situation. And it, I got to tell you, man, it absolutely sounded great. There was no problems with it. When I actually got up and talked right in front of it like this with my headphones on, I went, this actually sounds really full and rich and detailed on the top end. There's lots to like about it. Now in this video, you're going to be hearing the audio going direct to my Zoom recorder back there. I'm not using my DBX preamp or anything like that. If I have adjusted anything, I'll leave it on screen so you know exactly what I've done. Usually what I do in post is just raise the level up in Final Cut and that's about it. So I'm going to probably do some post processing to it a little bit later on in the video. But for right now, you're hearing it as it's being recorded. One of the big differences between, say, the Shure SM57 and the Behringer is the packaging. <laughs> Not so much the sound, but the packaging. Get a cardboard box and one of those zip bags with the SM57. But with the Behringer, you actually get a plastic hard case, which is one of the best things I think any microphone company could be doing, including something like this. Behringer do it with the majority of their microphones. Not all of them, but the majority of it. I think it's just a really great touch. It's going to last as long as you've got the microphone. Let's talk quickly about the specifications and features of this particular microphone. So this is a dynamic capsule, which means you don't need phantom power. If your desk or mixer doesn't have phantom power, it will just work and it will sound great. It's got that nice close proximity effect to it. The closer you are to it, the bigger it sounds and the further back you are, it kind of smooths out a little bit in terms of the bass frequency. In terms of the frequency response, we get a 40 hertz to 15 kilohertz frequency range. So not the full 20 to 20, and that's not unexpected considering it's an instrument microphone predominantly and your voice doesn't go down to 20 hertz anyway, nor does it really, um, on the most part, go up to 20 kilohertz. So you get a microphone that should sound great just straight away, removing the frequencies you most likely won't need for voice application. Two things to love about this particular microphone is it can handle a sound source up to 150 decibels. Now, I'm a guitarist, right? And one of the things I've never done is got my amp up to 150 decibels. I don't even know if it goes up to 150 decibels. So it can handle anything you've put in front of this, basically, is what I'm getting at. I think that's a really great touch, yet it still works fine for vocal application. The impedance of the microphone is rated at 310 ohms and a sensitivity of minus 54 dB. The second thing to love about this microphone is its cardioid polar pattern, which means how sensitive it is just from sound coming in the front and not from the sides and back. And I'm going to show you that right now. So as I turn it to 90 degrees, it should be cutting my voice out quite a lot. I turn it around to 180 degrees, you should be barely hearing anything. And as I turn it back around, you're going to hear my voice come back in. And there we go. So as you can see, if you've got another one of these microphones sitting across the table from me, from, for example, it's not going to be picking up a lot of the other person's sound in the room. That's a really great advantage, as well as if there's any ambient noise outside, you're not going to hear that either. So overall, I think the off-axis rejection is what they call it. I think it's really, really good. Now, if you do decide to buy one of these Behringer SL75C microphones, like any SM57, if you're talking right into the front, it's going to sound the best. But without a little pop filter, wind filter like this, you're going to get a lot of plosives. And plosives are what you're hearing right now, those B and P words that just really bottom out the microphone. The shooting wind into it. It sounds great if you're talking across it. You can get away with it. But I really feel like these microphones sound best talking into the front. That's just my own personal opinion. I've used these for live vocals as well. And if you're not up on the microphone, it, it doesn't quite sound as good. So if you're going to get one of these, get one of these little foam windshield things as well. I'll leave links to both in the description below. 
So one of the things that shocked me when I took out the Behringer SL75C from the box was the fact that it felt just as well built as my SM57. Now there are a couple of differences. The Behringer microphone is slightly smaller. It's a different color, but it has the full metal construction on the body. So it feels quite weighty. Now I've got a few other clones as well. One from Pile, which I got off Amazon about a year ago. And this is a really great sounding microphone as well. Coming in at around the same price as the Behringer, but the Behringer is much better built and it's just a heavier microphone in the hand, which I kind of like. There's nothing wrong with light microphones, but yeah, we may maybe we'll do a comparison between them coming up. If you'd like to hear that, let me know in the comments below. This section of the video, I thought what we'd do is compare the Behringer SL75C to the Rode PodMic. <laughs> So right now you're listening to the Rode Pod microphone, and in my headphones this sounds completely different. It doesn't have anywhere near the same niceness on the low end. It sounds a little bit more uniform across the board. Now I've reviewed this a number of times on the channel and compared it to other microphones. And one of the things that everyone suggests with this, and I suggest it as well, this microphone either requires an EQ before you're recording. So if you've got a little mixer, add a little bit of bass or add a little bit of mids. Or you can do that in post through Final Cut and you can get them to sound pretty comparable. But this is a much flatter microphone straight out of the gate. Now this comes in at $99 on B&H and I actually paid $150 Australian for this from a local shop here. And I'm not unimpressed with this microphone. I think it's a really great microphone, has great off-axis rejection as well. So if we turn it around, odds are you're not going to be hearing much of my voice. If we put it this way, we're going to probably hear about the same as we did with the SM57 and back. Now what I'm gonna do is just switch back quickly to show you how similar or how different they are just straight away without doing anything to the audio. And now back to the Behringer SL75C. So there's a huge difference in the audio. I know some people are gonna prefer the pod mic. I think it's a great sounding microphone. If I was doing a professional podcast thing on video, I'd probably opt for the pod mic only because of the visuals. I think this is a really awesome microphone. If you've got like say five or six people in a room and you want to do a podcast that way or even four, this would be a really great choice for keeping the price down. You could buy four or five of these for the same price as one of those Rode Pod mics. And what can I tell you? I actually think this sounds great straight away. Now for this last section, I'm going to add some post processing to the audio so you can see how it sounds. I'll do this in Final Cut. I'll probably add an expander change up the EQ slightly and maybe add some com compression or something like that. And you can see if it sounds like a professional microphone that way. I think my mouth has been hitting this little uh, foam windshield a few times. It's actually loose on there. This one isn't designed for the microphone, but you know, it's enough to get you going. But I, I really feel like for the money, this is a really tough microphone to beat. I've tested so many SM57 clones over the years. This is by far the best. Earlier I mentioned I tested this microphone in front of a guitar amplifier alongside the SM57 and there wasn't a lot in it. I preferred one microphone clean and then one microphone dirty. They both had their own unique character. They don't sound identical to each other, but they're very, very similar. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'll leave some links below if you want to check out this microphone. I really feel like the Behringer SL75C might be the best entry-level microphone for doing a podcast that sounds great. And just for a comparison again, back to the pod mic, just to show you how that sounds on the way out. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I'll catch you soon. See ya.